Hello grade 11. Today we're going to use the quadratic formula to um, solve quadratic equations. And there's lots of YouTube videos where people sing about the quadratic equation. What the quadratic equation is, is first of all, you need to have an equation that looks like this. Oops. A x squared plus b squared minus 4ac plus 0. In other words, you have to have a standard form. You have to have one sign equals 0. And then you have to have it in order of degrees. So you have your squared term, just your x term, and then just your number. Once you have these things, you can use the formula. And the formula equals x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all divided by 2. Okay? Something else to know is that a cannot be 0. So you have to have an x squared term. So, quadratic equation comes in handy when you can't factor something. Um, and even if you can factor something, you can use it. Sometimes it'll be a little longer. Um, where you're going to make errors is you're going to forget the square and the square here. You're going to forget that negative. Those are all things that you must forget. Okay, so here we're going to, to use this formula. So we have um, the end is higher to lay a path of uniform width around a rectangular bay area using crushed rock. He has enough crushed rock to cover 145 meters square. If he uses all the crushed rock, how wide will the path be? Okay, so here we have this mapped out. So the play area is 24 by 18, and what we're going to do is we're going to find what the area of the bigger square would be, and if we subtract from the play area, we're going to get the total area of just the path. So let's write that out. We're going to have the total area, area of path equals total minus play area. Okay? And this the total area of the path has to be 145. The play area is going to be 18 by 24. So 18 by 24 is 432 meters squared. So just 24 times 18. Okay. So what we really need to do is we need to find out what that total area is. So total area is going to be the sides multiplied by each other. Since we have a uniform of x, this side is going to be 24 plus x here plus x there. That's going to give us that total length. So in other words, it's 24 plus 2x is the width. Now the length is going to be 18 plus x on this side plus x on that side to get the whole length. So it's going to be 18 plus 2x. Okay? So, again, I said the total area is going to equal, sorry, the area of the path is going to equal the total area, which we said is 24 plus 2x and 18 plus 2x. And we're going to subtract 432, subtract the point. So now what we're going to do is we're going to expand. And if we can't factor, we're going to use our quadratic formula. So we get 24 times 18 is 432 plus 18 times 2x is going to be 36x plus 24 times 2 is. 48x plus 4x squared all minus 482. Since 482 is down below, I get 36 plus 48 is going to be 84x plus 4x squared. I already said from my question.
question. That my area is 145. So I know that 145 has to equal 84x plus 4x, right? Okay, so we are saying, oh, well, simple. I could just graph it, graph that, see where those graphs intersect. And you're right. Unless I told you you have to graph, you have to solve this using the quadratic equation. Then you'd get the right answer, but you wouldn't get the closest. Okay, so what we're going to do in order to use, remember, we need it, it in standard form. We need it to equal zero and we need it to be x squared and then your x term and then just your number term. So we have to take the rearranging before we can use this. Okay, so I'm going to put my zero on this side so I get on here. quadratic equation, quadratic form of that then x equals negative b plus or minus the square root. And this is something you don't need to memorize, this is something that will be given to you. b squared minus 4ac all divided by 2. Okay, so let's look at what a is. This is a, this is b, this is the a. So now we're just going to calculator and she'll help you or you'll help one another to get that correct answer. Okay, our denominator is 8. Okay, so now we need to do a little more simplify. We still have, now this is not, is not a nice square root. There is nothing we can take out of that. So this is going to be another just calculator work. So we have two options. This plus minus means we have one option. One option is that x equals negative 84 plus root 9, 376 divided by 8. The other option is that x equals negative 84 minus root 9, 376 over 8. So that plus minus means we have two cases. We have two potential roots. So what we're going to do is we're going to have to put this in our calculator. So again, in our calculator, we're going to want to put a bracket and then divide by 8. We want to try and do as much as we can on our calculator because each time we write it down, there's a chance of error. So putting this in our calculator, we should get 1.603 and some change. And here, you should get negative 22.6. Okay, so we've got two answers. Now here's my question. Does one of these not make sense? Does it not make sense to have a width of 1.6 meters? Yeah, that seems like an unreasonable path. Can you have a path with a width of negative 22? No. You can't have a negative 22 width. So our answer is um, 1.6. 
So the width of that path that we saw here The width of this path in order to get an uh, area of 1.145 meters squared is 1.6 meters. Okay, uh, so another one to try here. Solve the following equation. 6x squared minus 3 equals 7x. Okay, and remember our quadratic formula is x equals negative 4 minus 4, so b squared. Um, so first thing we have to do is we have to put this in standard form. We want a positive x squared, so we're going to leave the x squared on this side. We're going to subtract 7x to get 0. We have it in descending order. We have our squared term, our x term, and then the circle. And now we can sub this in. So just to check, our a value is 6, our b value is negative 7, and our c value is Let's sub this in. X equals negative B. So negative negative 7 is going to be positive 7 plus or minus the square root of B squared. Well, negative 7 squared is 49 minus 4 times 6 times 2 all divided by 2 times a. Now we're just doing that. We have 7 plus or minus the square root of 49. And it's best to do this all in your calculator. This one's easy enough numbers, so I'm just trying to do it without simplifying it. 4 times 6 is 24 times negative 3, which is 3 less than 75, is going to be positive. I believe that's 72. Okay, all divided by 12. X equals 7 plus or minus the square root of 49 plus 72. So 9, 10, 11, 7, 9. I believe that's less than 21 for 12. X is equal to 7 plus or minus the square root of 121, which is 11. Either x equals 7 plus 11 over 12, or x equals 7 minus 11 over 12. So in this case, we have 18 to 12. That can be simplified to 9, 6, which can be further simplified. We have 7 minus 11 is negative 5 to 12. And we don't have any context here, so we don't know if we can reject or not reject these answers. Okay, hopefully someone's getting a recurrent mistake here. 7 minus 11 is not 5. 7 minus 11 is... That's better. So this would be negative one-third. Negative one third looks good. Okay, let's try another one. Solve this quadratic equation. So, first of all, if you look here, we have it in the correct form. It says it's an exact value. So, an exact value means we're going to keep it as a radical, we're going to keep it as a fraction. We're not going to put it in a decimal. So, anytime we write a decimal that we keep, it's not as exact as if we keep it um, in its radical form. So remember, x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all divided by 2a. My a value in this case is 2, my b value is 8, and my c value is negative 5. Let's try this out. So we have x equals negative 8 plus or minus the square root of 8 squared minus 4 times 2 times negative 5 all divided by 2 times a times b. Okay, this one again I think I'm going to d 
too because it's simple math. If there were more bigger numbers, I'd want to try and do this one step in my calculator. Do this radical, this thing right here in one step. Okay. Negative 8 plus or minus the square root of 64. 4 times 2 is 8. Times 5 is 40. 2 negative makes it positive. All divided by 4. Feel free to slow me down if I'm a little bit faster. 64 plus 40 is going to be 104, all divided by 4. Okay, if I look at the number 104, I know that 104, just because I'm a math teacher, I'm good at this stuff, and you guys are getting good at this, is 26 times 4. You guys are all saying, okay, who cares? Well, the number 4 is a very special number. It's a perfect square. So I can write this as the square root of 4 times the square root of 26. That's the same as the square root of 104. And what this allows me to do is this allows me, the square root of 4 is just 2, so this is the same as 2 times root 26 over 4. And now I can take a common factor. I can divide each of these terms by 2. So 8 divided by 2 is 4. 2 divided by 2 is 1. 4 divided by 2 is 2. So I can reduce this. Get a more exact number. Okay, so my two answers, because I still have my plus minus, one of my answers is x equals negative 4 plus root 26 all divided by 2, and my other answer is x equals negative 4 minus root 26 over 2. So this is more precise, this is more of an exact answer than any decimal that you guys could give me. Okay, in summary, the roots of a quadratic equation in the form ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero, where a cannot equal zero can be determined by using the quadratic formula. So you're going to want to have this handy until you have it memorized, and you don't ever need to memorize, but I find that a lot of students do get it memorized by the end because we use it quite often. Some interesting things, the quadratic formula can be used to solve any quadratic equation. So this is super powerful. Any quadratic equation I could throw at you, if you use this formula properly, it can solve it. And what does it mean to solve? It means that we get the values of x such that the equation is valid. We get the roots. We get the zeros. Um, in this chapter, we kind of have a lot of words that mean the same thing. Okay, if the radicand in the quadratic formula simplifies to a perfect square, the equation can be solved by factoring. This is the radicand. So in the quadratic equation, if I got underneath the radical sign, the number 25, since 25 is a perfect square, I could have solved that by factoring. Okay, so where this is powerful is if I give you an equation and I say solve by um, factoring, and you're like, I don't think I can. You could quickly check with the quadratic formula. When you get a perfect square there, you go, oh, she was right. She was asking the right thing. Okay, if the radical in the formula simplifies to a negative number, so if I got a negative number here, there is no real solution. Okay, so whenever you get a negative number there, right away you can say no solution. And the reason I say no real solution is the grade 12s learn about something called imaginary numbers. And, that, and there is a solution, it's just an imaginary solution. And don't worry, don't lose sleep over what it means to be an imaginary number just yet. You can lose sleep about that in grade 12. Okay, you guys can get started on your assignments.